Hello everyone, welcome to Bible Studies for Life Sunday School, January the 31st. Uh, we are so grateful and thankful for you. Thank you for uh, tuning in and joining us. We do appreciate you and we do love you and we are praying for you. And if we can do anything else, please let us know. Uh, but hope that you have had a good week and that everything has been going uh, good for you. Um, uh, hope that you're remaining uh, well. And uh, we just appreciate all of you so much. May God bless you and uh, provide for you and take care of you. Uh, may he continue to do an amazing work in your life and through your life. And, and again, we're just so thankful for you. And if we can help you in any way, please let us know. I'd love to minister to you in any way that you might need. But uh, so glad that you tuned in today. My God, uh, use this to uh, help you and encourage you. Uh, may he uh, use it. Uh, in your life to uh, keep you focused on him and, and um, help you continue to have a strong relationship with him. And I uh, also pray that these uh, lessons help you be prepared for when Jesus does come back, that we all are ready to meet him. But again, we are so thankful for you and we are praying for you. And if you need us, please uh, contact us. <clears throat> Love to uh, help you and serve you in any way that you might need. Um, but as we, uh, you know, have progressed uh, throughout um, uh, time, um, I remember used to uh, when, when we would travel, uh, a lot of times my dad would have an atlas. Um, and and uh, he has always been uh, very familiar with uh, with roads and uh, nowhere to go but every now and then he would have to open that map and and check the the roads and uh, you know which is the best route which way we need to go where do we need to turn and um, he was good at uh, before we would go on the trip uh, to kind of get the uh, the map uh, lined up of, of where to go and it was just always amazing to me that it seemed like wherever we were, wherever we were going, didn't matter if it was northeast, southwest, that he knew exactly where to go, uh, knew exactly where to turn. And <clears throat> there are a few times that we may have had to stop and, and ask directions, but, but not very frequently. Um, again, he uh, used that, that map to be familiar with the roads. Well, uh, as we know, times have changed, and we can uh, uh, put the uh, address of where we're going uh, into our phone, and uh, we can have the uh, GPS at our disposal to, um, to type in where we're going, and it will, uh, you know, call out where to turn, um, how far to travel on this particular road. Um, let you know when it's about time to, to turn and so uh, you know it's it's been a very handy to have that that GPS uh, where we can just type it in and it tells us where to go where to turn and you know every now and then uh, it might not necessarily lead us to the exact place um, you know sometimes um, you know it might be a little off Sometimes um, it could possibly um, uh, take us where we don't, aren't necessarily wanting to go. But the majority of the time, I guess the GPS works pretty well for us. Well, uh, you know, we have our own GPS in our, our spiritual life, in our uh, life with God, in our walk with God. Uh, and that is uh, the Word of God. That is His Word, His uh, that's the Bible. And so God has allowed us to have it uh, so that we can uh, uh, know him, uh, so that we can uh, know how he wants us to live, uh, so that it can be a, a guide uh, for us. It can help us uh, overcome temptation. As, as Jesus used scripture to overcome temptation, God can use his word in our life to help us overcome temptation. Um, God's word can, can be a map to us. It can, uh, you know, let us know um, 
how God wants us to be, how God wants us to live, how God wants us to act. Um, it uh, can be a, uh, a light to our path. Uh, it can help us be uh, the light for, for Jesus, uh, for the world to see. And so just as, as it tells us in Hebrews 4 that the Word of God is powerful and it's living uh, because the author is living and, and God is uh, very much alive and, and God's Word uh, is alive and uh, it's always relevant, it's always practical. And so hopefully we allow God to use His Word uh, to be our map, to use it in our life to lead us in the right direction, to help us uh, go uh, where he wants us to go, to help us uh, uh, have something in our life to, uh, to live by and to be obedient uh, to and, and to, to know God. It's really neat that God knows us so well that he knows how many hairs are on our head. Um, God knows us inside and out. God knows us better than we know ourselves. God created us, so therefore he knows us. But God also wants us to know him. He wants us to know him um, in an intimate way. He wants us to read scripture so that we can uh, can know him. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really <clears throat> uh, neat and, and interesting, you know, when we um, meet new people, and, and sometimes as we meet new people, we, um, we can tell that they would be a great friend. And so we, you know, spend time with them because we enjoy spending time with them. And, and they, you know, there are uh, people in our lives that God has blessed us with that are great friends. Um, and also as, as you, uh, you know, date, someone you you spend time with them to get to know them and you spend time with them because you enjoy spending time with them um, and so you know spending time with a, a dating relationship spending time with a spouse spending time with friends spending time with families because you want to get to know them better you you enjoy their company hopefully it's the same way with God that we really enjoy taking time uh, all throughout the day, every day, to spend time with our Father, with our Savior, with our leader, with our Messiah, with our God, uh, that we spend time with Him to get to know Him and, and allow Him to invest, our, invest His life into us so that uh, we allow Him to overflow out of our life, that we allow Him to shine through us, that we allow Him to live through us and speak through us. And so uh, it's very important to to spend time in the Word of God. Again, to know Christ as well as to um, know how He wants us to live. And so the Word of God is, is very uh, valuable uh, and it's very important uh, for us to um, have the Word of God, the Bible, a huge part of our life. <clears throat> and so with that said, um, in Psalm 119, um, uh, Psalm 119 is the uh, longest chapter uh, in the Bible, uh, <clears throat> I believe, with uh, 172 uh, verses. Uh, so, uh, but it, it's packed with uh, a lot of great uh, analogies to the Word of God. The, the uh, psalmist um, has a huge desire to, uh, to know the Word of God, uh, to live by the Word of God, uh, to hide God's word in his heart so that he will not sin against God. And so, uh, you know, hopefully we allow God to use the psalmist to encourage us to view God's word in the same way, that we have a, a passion to know what's in the word of God, that we have a desire to uh, spend time reading the word of God so that once again we can know how he wants us to live and so that we can be obedient and also so that we can know Christ as uh as best we can while we're here on earth and so again god god's word is powerful because god is all powerful and it can be powerful in our life if we allow it to be and so uh the psalmist tells us in psalm 119 <clears throat> 17 and 18 it says <clears throat> excuse me deal generously with your servant so that i might live 
Then I will keep your word, open my eyes, so that I may contemplate wondrous things from your instruction. And so, <clears throat> um, let me read you what the author of this lesson says, because um, they put it very well. It says in Psalm 119, 17 through 24, radiates with passion for God's word. You know, it's really neat how a lot of times by somebody's conversation, you can tell what they're, they're passionate about. Um, you know, a lot of times by uh, watching someone, you can tell what they are, are passionate about. Um, you know, a lot of times down south, it's, it possibly could be about football. Or, you know, it can be about, um, you know, someone's career. Um, whatever the case may be, uh, you know, we can tell when somebody's passionate about something. And, and I've noticed in my own life when I'm passionate about something. And, you know, if I can use jogging as an illustration. <clears throat> I know I probably overuse this illustration a lot. But, uh, you know, I, I'm pretty passionate about jogging because um, I... I it doesn't always feel good while I'm, I'm jogging, but I, I love the after effect, how it kind of uh, makes me feel. And so um, I'm passionate about jogging, so therefore I, I want to jog every day uh, because I, I enjoy it so much. And in this psalm, uh, the, the psalmist is very passionate about God's word. And, you know, there's so many times that I pray and ask God to help me be as passionate about his word as I am about jogging. You know, one day I won't be able to, to jog again. Uh, one day this world will be over. And, uh, but, you know, the word of God lives forever. And so, therefore, I'm to participate in things that will live forever. And so, therefore, it's important to spend time in the word of God. It's important to, to share the good news with people, uh, to offer them the hope of Jesus, because that's what lasts forever. My jogging days won't, but <clears throat> the Word of God will last forever. Uh, God has always been here. God will always be here. So what we do for God uh, will last forever. <clears throat> and so the psalmist is, is passionate about God's Word, and, and hopefully we kind of, uh, draw encouragement that from that that we are, are passionate as well about God's word. <clears throat> it says the composer pleaded for God's favor so that he could live and keep your word. The verbs rendered live and keep are both tied to obedience. By repeating the concept with parallel words, the psalmist emphasized that the goal wasn't merely to know or understand God's instruction. It was to live it, keep it, and obey it. Again, I, I love this. The psalmist wanted to live the word, wanted to keep the word, and wanted to obey the word. <clears throat> the psalmist didn't view his obedience as a difficult obligation. He didn't view God's word as a means to merely make his life better. The Lord's instruction was his reason for life. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I don't know if you uh, did this, but I remember when I first became a Christian, <clears throat> I was excited because I had a relationship with God, and it was excited because um, I was going to uh, be able to spend eternity in heaven. But probably uh, uh, maybe a month after I became a Christian, um, I knew that I needed to read the Word of God, but uh, it became like a... Uh, something that I thought I, uh, I had to do. And so therefore it became like a, uh, like a, uh, a, a duty, uh, uh, kind of a, you know, I better do this or I have to do this. And, and so when I had that attitude, I really didn't get much out of what I read. I just, uh, did it because I thought it was, um, you know, I, I, I got to do this. And sometimes, um, you know, <clears throat> I would do it so that um, on those Sunday school envelopes, when I put my dollar in the envelope and it uh, had, you know, 
what I did that week, and one of them was daily Bible reading. And so, you know, I wanted to read the Bible so I could check that uh, that uh, block. And um, I probably couldn't tell you what I read, but but I did read. But a lot of times, <clears throat> I would uh, just do it out of you know I I had to, uh, not I want to, or not I get to. But the psalmist here. Uh, was wanting to live the Word of God. He wanted to, to keep the Word of God. And, and again, um, his goal wasn't merely to know or understand God's instruction. It was to live it, keep it, and obey it. And so again, <clears throat> God's Word is amazing because God is amazing. And, it, and God can use His Word to do great things in our life and through our life. And so the psalmist was passionate about that, was passionate about living God's word and obeying God's word. And, and he's encouraging us to do the same. It says the psalmist didn't view his obedience as a difficult obligation. Um, again, he, he viewed it as, a, um, you know, this is, is God's instruction to me, and I want to live it. Uh, it's not an obligation that I have. It's not something that I check off. It's a passion that I have. I want to read it. I want to understand it. I want to know Christ, and I want to be obedient to Christ because he loves me and because I love him. He's passionate about me, so therefore I want to be passionate about him. He goes on to say, reading the Bible daily will do more to help you grow spiritually than any other choice you make. Again, that's something to think about. Reading the Bible daily will do more to help you grow spiritually than any other choice you make. Beyond the immediate benefit of encountering God when you read the Bible, the understanding that develops over a lifetime of reading the Word provides a framework for all other spiritual disciplines. Your understanding of God's will as revealed in the Bible helps you distinguish between God's voice and other influences. The psalmist pleaded for the Lord to open his eyes so that he could see the awesome teachings of the law. He was desperate to encounter God through his word. He didn't want the cares of life to distract him from what was most important. Because he had an open heart, he cried out for open eyes so that God would reveal his truth to him from the word. So let me ask you a question as I'm asking myself the same question. Do we have that same desire? Do we have that, that same passion for God and, and for his word that we look forward to opening his scripture to see what he has to say to us, that we pray that God helps us understand it that we pray and ask God to help us apply it, that we pray and ask God to help us obey it, that we delight in God's word. It's not an obligation to us. It's something that we enjoy. It's something that we're passionate about. Uh, again, we it seems like um, we do better at things that we enjoy. So we are a stronger Christian when we spend time in God's Word and, the, and when we enjoy it, when we're passionate about it. Again, reading Scripture is one of the best things that we could do all day long. Uh, and so it's, it's so important for us as God's children to read God's Word so that God can use it in, as a powerful tool in our life and that we allow God's Word to be a powerful resource in our life and we share it with, with those around us so that it can be a powerful tool in their life as well. It says, understanding God's word is a spiritual work requiring the Holy Spirit to illuminate its meaning to the reader. And so again, as we read God's word, we can pray to God and ask him to help us understand what we're, what we're reading we can pray to God and, and ask him to help us be obedient uh, to what we're reading in God's word. Um, again, it's so important to, to read it, to think about it, uh, to memorize it, 
uh, to focus on it, to meditate on it, um, to keep it, to hide it in our hearts so that we won't sin against God. Again, God's Word is powerful. It can help us overcome temptation. It can comfort us. It can, uh, we can allow God to use it in our life um, to minister to us, and we can use it for, to other pe in other people's lives to minister and comfort and encourage them as well. And so it's amazing how God can use His Word to, um, to instruct us and, and to guide us. And so uh, hopefully we allow God to do that uh, through his word in our life. And one last verse I wanted to read was Psalm 119, 24. It says this, <clears throat> Your decrees are my delight and my counselors. Again, as we think about the word delight, sometimes, again, I, I've overused this a lot too, so I apologize, but... Um, you know, when I think about delight, I think about, you know, I delight in drinking chocolate milk because it is extremely good in my opinion. My taste buds really enjoy drinking uh, chocolate milk. And so <clears throat> I've, I've learned something else that uh, causes that delight to be even more so now. I really delight in drinking chocolate milk, but, but I've learned that uh, and this is, you know, adding more calories, and it's uh, even, it's kind of adding a, um, more of a rich taste. But uh, I've learned that when I pour a glass of chocolate milk, and if I pour a little uh, creamer in it, either French vanilla or vanilla caramel, it makes it that much better. And so, therefore, my taste buds are really delighting in this glass of chocolate milk. It is uh, tastes extremely good. Um, and so I delight in that. But once again, it's so important to delight in God's Word, to realize how good God is for us to be able to have the Word of God. So, I hope that we don't just have the Bible lying around on a uh, table or a shelf somewhere and we never pick it up. I hope that we take delight in God's Word so that it can uh, help us through life, so that God can use it to empower us because the Holy Spirit can empower us. And, and I hope that we are passionate about it that we take delight in reading it and that we live according to the Word of God, that we are obedient to the Word of God, that, that it is our guide, that it is our map, and that we become like Jesus because we are spending time in His Word, get to know Him and becoming more and more like Him. And as we become more like Him, that we are a bright light for everyone to see Jesus shining through. <clears throat> It also says this, <clears throat> when our focus is on how bad things are, we lose sight of how good God is. We should give time to reading and reflecting on God's Word until its teachings become a part of our fiber. Bible reading gives breath. Bible study gives depth. Meditating on the Word gives perspective. Spending quality time in God's Word changes the way we think and respond to life. Let me read that one more time. Spending quality time in God's Word changes the way we think and respond to life. When we meditate on God's Word, it becomes the constant counselor that guides our decisions. Then and only then will we have the proper life perspective to face the insults, contempt, and persecution coming from the sin-saturated world we live in. And so again, the Bible, God's Word, can be very powerful in our life. Are we allowing God to use His Word to help us become more like Him and to help us be a light among the people around us? Uh, <clears throat> 
there's a, a lot of times when I go to um, um, certain sporting events that I, um, I feel myself getting really frustrated at times. Um, and when I get frustrated, uh, whether it be um, a poor call or whether it be um, lack of effort uh, from someone that is uh, really close to me, um, sometimes I get frustrated and sometimes I, I want to let my frustrations be heard or known and so therefore um, I want to yell things that I possibly shouldn't yell and so as I feel my frustration build God reminds me um, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And so I realize that I am very sinful. I realize that um, the only reason that Paul could say that he is chief among sinners is because I wasn't born yet. So uh, I, I hate to tell you this, but I have taken over that role now. I believe I'm the chief among sinners. And so therefore, because I am so sinful, God reminds me, I need to spend time in the Word of God so that I can know God, so that I can hopefully allow Him to make me more like Him, so that I concentrate on the Word of God so that it comes out of my mouth instead of flesh coming out of my mouth and that I spend time with God in his word so that I can be a light and encouragement instead of a, a poor example. And so it's very hard to do, but I find, my, I find out that when I allow God to control me, control my speech, control my thoughts, control my actions, things go much smoother and I have more inner peace. But I wouldn't have known any of that unless at a young age my mom taught me how important it is to read the Word of God. She didn't just tell me that it's important to read the Word of God. She showed me because she read the Word of God. And I believe she reads it every single morning, probably around 4.30 or even earlier before she starts her day. She fills her mind with the Word of God. And, and I watched that and I wanted that. And so when we read the Word of God, when we live by the Word of God, when we keep the Word of God, when we allow God to make us like himself, not only is God using it to do a powerful work in our life, God is using it to do a powerful work in the lives of people around us. And so the Word of God is living and powerful. Is it living and powerful in our life so that other people gain God's perspective because we live according to God's perspective? And as we concentrate on the Word of God, it comes out of our life and points people to Jesus. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for your Word. Lord, help us uh, take delight in it. Help us be passionate about it. Help us read it and memorize it, meditate on it. Help us live by it. Help us obey it. Lord, I pray, Lord, that we will follow it. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you'll help us become more like you. Lord, help us know you. I pray, Lord, that we will help other people know you as well. Lord, shine brightly through us. Lord, change the world through us. 
Help us be your, your feet and your hands and your voice. Lord, thank you for each one joining us today. Please bless them and reward them. Please uh, let them know that you're always with them and that you love them very much and that they are very valuable to you and to your plan and to your kingdom. Lord, have them always experience your, your presence and your peace and your power. Have them always experience your joy. Lord, continue to keep them safe and healthy and well and continue to do your great work in them and through them, Father. Please bless each one and take care of them, Father, and do what only you can do in, in their lives. And I just pray, Lord, that, um, again, that you will do what only you can do. Please bless them, Lord, and we thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, again, thank you for joining us. We do love you and appreciate you. We are praying for you. And if we can do anything else, please let us know. And may God bless you. May he use his word in a powerful way in your life and through your life. Uh, thank you so much. May God bless you, and we love you. Amen.